here's the tea. We're going to try to have a baby. We're going to try to have a baby sometime soon. I don't know when. I don't know where. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I'm going to be sharing all that. But I am going to be sharing what I'm doing to prepare to bring baby K Earthside sometime in the future. Because I'm both a dietitian and an endometriosis baddie, I thought it would be helpful to kind of go through some of the things that I'm doing to set up a good foundation to help my body be able to carry a baby and to create a conversation that normalizes talk about preparing for conception. If this is something that you're into, welcome. Let's get started. So for this video, I'm going to be focusing on three areas that I'm putting a lot of attention to when it comes to preparing for conception. I'm going to be talking about my nutrition, my movement, and my mental health. When it comes to nutrition, there's a few foundational things that are important to consider when you're preparing for conception. The number one thing that you'll hear is to take a prenatal. It's recommended that you take a prenatal three to six months before planning to conceive. However, I've met folks that take them a lot longer uh, just in case. But I think three to six months is a great starting point if you are starting to conceive. But preparation for a baby starts way before that when it comes to our nutrition. We want to make sure that first of all, we're eating enough. If you're not eating enough, it can cause problems down the line when you do conceive because then the baby will start pulling from your stores. And if your stores are not enough, it's going to deplete you. So we really want to try to make sure that there's enough of everything inside of your body so that when the baby's in there and they take what they need to take, usually in the third trimester is where they take the most of it, um, then you'll be still left with enough for you. I hope that makes sense. Back to the prenatal. When it comes to choosing a prenatal, it's kind of up to you and your preferences. There's so many different kinds of prenatal out there in the market. There's ones that you can eat. There's ones that you can drink. There's ones that you can take a tablet. There's tablets that are like a bunch of times a day, one time a day, et cetera, et cetera. The one that works for you is the one that works for you is what I'm hearing from a lot of my mom friends. And that's what kind of should guide you to make a choice about your prenatals. You should also meet with your doctor beforehand to determine if there's any nutritional deficiencies to make sure that you're getting a prenatal or any additional supplements that'll help fill in those gaps. When we're talking about what to look for in a prenatal, we definitely want to make sure that there is some folic acid that's going to be helpful to prevent any neural tube defects that could develop in the baby at birth. Additionally, my doctor made sure to point out that my prenatal should have choline in it. So I made sure to pick one that had that and that's helpful for things like brain health and then whatever other little things that you need. When it comes to me personally, I know that I have a vitamin D deficiency, so I'm taking a vitamin D supplementation. And because I have endometriosis, I'm also making sure to take omega-3s to help with any inflammation that's in my body. On top of that, I was recommended to take CoQ10 and this is helpful to energize the egg is how it was explained to me for my fer fertility health. So I'm also taking that supplementation, but these are very specific recommendations that were made for me based on my body and my lab work. When it comes to the things that I'm eating, like I said, I'm trying to prioritize vitamin D rich foods and I'll list some here for you to look at as well. On top of that, I am prioritizing fiber. I always prioritize fiber because I have endometriosis and endometriosis is a whole body disease and some would also say it's an inflammatory disease. So when we're thinking of one of the many 100 roles that fiber plays in our body, one of those is helping to get rid of inflammation through pooping, essentially. That's like the, the, the thinnest thread I can thread for that. But basically, anything that's in excess, fiber is helpful in getting rid of it. Fiber-rich foods that I tend to gravitate towards looks like nuts, beans, seeds, legumes, uh, whole grains here and there and vegetables. I don't really love the fruit in this country, so I don't really eat too much fruit. But when I do find a fruit that I like, I make sure to have that too and I get some fiber in there. Another thing that I'm focusing on is protein. Protein is essential in muscle health and it's also 
the nutrient that takes the longest to break down, which helps with being satisfied with our meals. So I make sure to prioritize a variety of proteins, but we are all humans and we kind of gravitate towards what we gravitate towards. So I typically have things like chicken and eggs on hand, uh, dairy based proteins like yogurt, cottage cheese, core power protein shakes are always in my house. These are things that we kind of gravitate towards because we are preparing for conception. I have been incorporating a lot of seafood, specifically tinned fish. I feel like this is one of the most economical ways to include seafood. So for me, that looks like lots of sardines. I tried herring recently and that was interesting. <laughs> But basically, just any way that I can get some seafood in helps me increase my intake of omega-3s, which is helpful for the inflammation, and vitamin D because I'm deficient. And I do want to point out that these are not things that I'm eating eating for the baby, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, that's not what we're talking about. It's like making sure that there's enough nutrition in the body so that we can carry a baby full to full term and that the baby has enough to suck from when they're in there. When it comes to things that I'm limiting, it's a pretty small list. Uh, because I have endometriosis, I kind of already limit these things anyway, but I'm just a little bit more on top of it as we're getting closer to whenever TTC starts. Uh, number one, I'm limiting my alcohol intake. I barely drink at all anymore. Uh, and alcohol is very inflammatory for my body. I get really sick when I drink. It's not really a good time. Um, so I'm just making a big effort to drink a lot less or at all. Uh, that's why I've been trying a lot of more like mocktails and like different drinks. If you're new to this page, me and my husband tried My Muse and I'll link that video below so you can check it out. But basically we just taste tested these really fun drinks that were sent over to us. But besides that, I only, if I do drink, it's like one or two because I'm not trying to feel uncomfortable or be causing a flare up of any kind. Another thing that I'm limiting is caffeine. Caffeine doesn't really sit well with my body. Uh, once I notice that, it's been really hard to kind of go back. If I am gonna have coffee, I try to have it when it's outside of my menstrual cycle and early in the day to kind of not mess me up throughout the whole day, although it does. <laughs> And if I really want coffee, I try to like have decaf. Otherwise, I don't really get caffeine anywhere else. I try to drink herbal teas, if anything. You know, very cognizant of that because caffeine doesn't sit well with me. So let's get into some things that I'm doing physically. If you watched my previous video, Operation Glow Up, you already know that I've been doing some things to kind of put myself first when it comes to loving my chichos and moving my body. If you haven't watched that video yet, basically what I'm doing is just focusing on moving my body as much as I can. The general workout plan is doing cardio every day, whether it's in the dance cardio class that I joined or walking on the treadmill. And when it gets cooler out here, walking outside would be great. Love it, would love to do that. Those would be my main sources of cardio then my goal that I'm working towards is doing some strength training two to three times a week. And then the rest of the time I'm doing yoga or stretching. I recently joined Kendra Tolbert's Create Life Mindfully program. And basically that's a space where other like-minded people are preparing for conception or are in their journey of conception. And Kendra does a really great job of creating YouTube videos or videos around yoga for fertility. And she also has like journaling prompts for us, a space for us to talk and all of these delicious, fun things to kind of be in a community for this next step of our lives. Um, so that's part of my movement routine as well. I love doing her little videos whenever I have a chance. I love that you can choose whether you want five, 10, or more minutes. I can't remember what the other increments are. I feel like 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. Those are the big components of the movement that I'm doing. I am tossing the idea of as we get closer to when we're actually gonna start trying to conceive, um, seeing a pelvic floor therapist. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that or not, 
but I know I'm going to do that after because <laughs> I actually posted a video on TikTok asking mothers or people that take care of kids what exercises they wish they did or had done to prepare for a baby. And a lot of it resonated with some of the things that I already started to do, which is cardio, uh, weightlifting, some things that, that I need to do from there is core. A lot of core strength was mentioned. And another thing that was mentioned a lot was pelvic floor health. So that's something that I'm like, but you know, I'll get there when I get there, if I get there, but definitely after. So basically that's all the things I'm doing when it comes to my physical health to make sure that I'm getting ready for baby K. Let me know if you did something or you wish you would have done something in the comments. I would love to hear and share the knowledge with myself and everyone else that's watching this video. The last thing I'm doing to kind of prepare for baby K is prioritizing my mental health. When we moved here, I kind of stopped going to therapy just to see how things were going and they were going fine. But as we're getting closer to this next chapter of my life, I want to make sure that I have the proper tools to help me after we give birth so that I can continue to kind of take care of myself and hopefully prevent postpartum depression or postpartum anxiety or the both of them because I, I feel that I am susceptible to them because I have depression and anxiety. Um, so having someone to talk to now about those very valid fears is really helpful to kind of set me up in a way where I'm able to manage my stressors, lean into my routines, and just get me in a better space. It's also helpful to kind of talk through some of the fears that I have about being a parent, navigating parenthood away from so many people that are so crucial to my life. As you know, we moved to Texas and everyone that we know is far as hell. So bringing a baby into this world, knowing that we'll be alone in a sense is terrifying to say the least. So having someone to kind of talk through those things with and process and prepare is a hundred percent a great investment for me. So I, I'm so grateful that I get to do that. I also will link below in the descriptions, some places where you can check out for therapists that are inclusive or from different backgrounds that have been helpful for me in my personal search for therapists if you're in the market to get some mental health support too. Another thing when it comes to my mental health is sleep. I am doing my best to prioritize sleep the best that I can because I know how much that impacts me. And a fun thing about being a parent is that you don't get enough sleep is what I hear. I don't know, I don't know, but I don't want that to ruin me. And I want to have systems in place to kind of fall back on so that if I don't get enough sleep, I can still finagle my way. Hopefully, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not an expert. I'm doing this for the first time. I have no experience. I am not the one to say, but this is what I'm thinking of in this conversation of preparation for the baby. And if there's some things that you did to help you prepare mentally, or related to your mental health, please share in the comments. I think that it would be a super helpful thing to have a conversation around. And that's pretty much it. Those are the three things that I'm focusing on right now to help prepare my body to bring baby K Earthside whenever they decide to come. I'm super curious to hear from you what resonated with you about this, what didn't resonate with you, what you would have done differently, what I said that made no sense, let me know all of it. I'm looking to create some community and conversation around this because as someone that has endometriosis, I don't see too much content like this. So I want to create the space so that we can have these conversations and help them be a little bit more open and comfortable and honest. That's it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're interested to see what else I'm going to be doing to prepare for conception, I do have another video coming out on some other things that I'm doing to prepare con for conception that's outside of this space. So if you're into that, feel free to turn on the notifications to make sure you know exactly when that video comes out so you can watch it. And if you made it all the way through to this video, feel free to leave a, a pregnant girly emoji in the comments 
to let me know that you made it all the way through, to let the algorithm know that you watched it and enjoyed it. Uh, this really helps my channel grow as well as sharing the video. If you think that someone could benefit from this video, please share it. I'm here to help us all connect and love our chichos together and sharing is caring. <laughs> but thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. I love you so much. Have a beautiful day. Catch you in the next video. Love you. Bye.